Can you type yes in the chat box if you can hear me loud and clear? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'm very loud and clear. Good. All right. So I don't think we have to waste much time to wait for the others. Today we are right on time. And then we'll start. Okay. Uh, how many of us are here? 37. Can I, can any of the class rep please raise your hands? Um, let me have a quick conversation with you. If any class rep is here, kindly raise your hand and let me, okay, good. So I see, all right, so, um, Prempe, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm good and okay. you. So, uh, uh, which which campus? You are right for which campus? Kumasi. Kumasi campus. Okay, very good. How many are you in that class for Kumasi? Kumasi. We are one one seventy. Okay, so we are expecting more. I think in total we are close about five hundred. If I'm not wrong, from the data that I collected the last time. Anyway, let's go yeah. ahead and have class. Uh, later on, I'll call you guys to con confirm the numbers. I want to be very sure exactly how many people that we have in this class. Okay. Oh, all right. All right. So good morning once again to everyone. And I especially welcome you to today's session. We have a lot to cover, not just for today, but the rest of the semester, the session that we have ahead of us. So this course is called the Relationship Marketing Strategy and Entrepreneurship, mainly uh, prepared for our uh, nursing and midwifery class and the reason for us doing this is very simple just to expose our health professionals into the ideas of entrepreneurship i'm sure you know very clearly that we are living currently on just one stream of income and the one because of the one stream of income that's mainly the reason why sometimes we easily get on strike we easily get upset because maybe the government or somebody is not doing the right thing for us and then we eventually go on strike and we cause all kinds of problems. So we at Garden City thought it wise, why don't we add this course to your program so that we may expose you to some ideas about entrepreneurship so that those who are interested and those who are passionate about making some extra income or starting their own businesses would be able to uh, do that for themselves, gain some additional income by the side, and eventually, when they even retire, they should be able to retire into their own businesses. And for so far, so good. So far, so good. And I'm very happy that I told you the last time that my real passion for this course is not just for you to just make good grades, but most importantly, for you to be able to understand the basic foundation of entrepreneurship and be able to start something for yourself. And I am a living testimony to that, and I know what I'm talking about. So it's my deep prayer that as we go through this semester, all those already in business will have some clarity as far as their businesses are concerned. And those who have not started anything at all would be able to gather some ideas and strategies and tactics and, and whatever it takes to start a business and manage it very profitably for them to make some additional income alongside with that one. So once again, I want to say a very big thank you for joining us and I'm glad to share all my experiences with you uh, as far as entrepreneurship, as far as marketing strategies are concerned to build a very successful business. Today, I want to touch base very fun, the foundational principles of entre entrepreneurship. And I will start by just trying to throw some light on the issue about the challenges of life today. And the first thing that we see is that increasingly, people are very getting the desire to start their own businesses. And it's very true. It's very true. Everybody wants to start something by their side. But, but unfortunately, many are failing in their business because we are doing the wrong things to how to manage a business. Many people have started something. Many people have failed woefully with what they started. And many people have even decided they are not even going to do business at all. They will just start, stay in corporate, uh, do their eight to five job. And when they, when they are 60 years and they go on, on pension, that's it. They're okay. It's basically because they started something and they failed. But there's a way to run a business. There's a way to go about it. There's a way to put your thoughts around your small business that eventually it may become the best kind of business that you want. Just this week, um, a professor or friend of mine had his noble address at UCC and he gave out a staggering um, statistic that really, really got my attention. He said that Ghana ranks third in the rate of small business failures. Ghana is number three after Angola and Rwanda 
in business failure. So if you're looking at countries, very small businesses fail a lot, Ghana runs number three, and this is serious. But this is the first time I heard about it. I knew businesses fail. I knew many people have started their business and they fail, but I never knew that Ghana was ranking that high. And it's not surprising because me, myself, I failed. I failed woefully, and I think I told the last time that we met, it was bad. How can somebody teaching entrepreneurship and marketing in the university at the university level start their own business with some small money, borrowing from friends, borrowing from family and friends, borrowing from the bank, and run a very simple small business, couldn't manage it, and eventually lost all the money of the banks, lost, lost, lost all the money of the family and friends, lost my own money, and became that embarrassing. Even though this, the statistic that he indicated was, was shocking to me, I wasn't too much surprised because I've been there before. There's a way to run a business. And I think so far I have the formula. Many people want to do that. Why do they want to do this? They want to do this because they want additional income. They want some additional income for themselves to be able to support their family, live better lives, and be help other people as well. Again, there's also a strong desire for people with talents to transform their talents into business. And the talent here, I mean that there are people who, we all of us have some gift. I mean, that's what the good book tells us. All of us have some kind of gift that we have. But now it has come very glaring that many of us who have these talents want to now showcase the talent and eventually transform that talent in some kind of business. So it's not surprising we are seeing so many people doing all kinds of things, makeup artists, uh, musicians, footballers, all kinds of people are doing all kinds of things with their gifts and talents. And again, many of them are not doing too well because the challenge is that we, are, we don't know what it takes to run that small business. And I'll explain to you that the nature of running a corporate organization is very, very different from running a small business. Very, very, there's a big difference. Maybe let me just stay here and explain that for us to see. When we take a big, big company, the company is built up because the owner or the director of that business have been able to bring together professionals with specialized skilled area to manage the business with different departments. So you go to a bigger company, you don't see one person running the whole show. You see individuals with professional skills. So you see an accountant, a chartered accountant, taking care of the money issue of the business. You see a certified HR person or somebody with an HR PhD or even sometimes MBA in finance, HR, managing the HR issues in the business. You don't find a technical person, running operational person running the business. You find um, a marketing professional Chartered marketer, PhD, MBA in marketing, specialized in that area, marketing, uh, taking care of the marketing side of the business. You find people with different, different, different skill sets who have come together to run a business. But you see, when a business has a problem, what do they do? They bring all these heads of department who are specialized people in their own field. They take them to a village somewhere, take them to some hotel somewhere over a weekend. And by the time these guys come back, to the company in, in the next week or something like that, they have a solution. Because during that meeting, the finance person, the accountant, the marketer, the sales professional, the HR, the administrator, all those people come together and then they pull their heads together, they jaw jaw together, and they're able to come up with a solution. So the problem doesn't fall on one person's head. It falls on every department's head and they're able to come up with a solution. That is not the same for a small business owner. That's the same for the entrepreneurial business owner, like people like us who started our own, our own businesses. When you start a business as an entrepreneur, you are your own CEO, you are your own HR manager, you are the marketing manager, you are the accountant, you are the administrator, you are the finance person, you are the producer. But the, challenge, the most challenging part of the small business is that whilst the one person wears all these different hats of managing his business, their specialty is only in one area of managing the business. What does it mean? It means that his specialty might be, let's say, a nurse or a midwife. And then you are good at that. You can deliver babies, you can go to the theater with your doctor, do all those medical stuff. But when it comes to HR, not much idea. Marketing, sometimes even zero. Administration, nil. Uh, finance, way negative. So now when the business has a problem, there's nobody to run to. You, you just wrap your head around everything else. And because you don't have, no, even have any idea at all, you even worsen the case. And many times, we end up killing the businesses. But I told you the last time that I have been able to come up with a solution for what I do as a consultant to support small businesses to run their businesses. And it's been amazing for me how far I've come with some of these things. And as I don't lie, I will share with you.
And by the way, I want to thank all those who also joined the uh, the Build to Last page. Uh, we have a page where we we bring everybody together, and every week, every Thursday evening, we run a free seminar for entrepreneurs just to help us to build our businesses. So all those who have joined, I really want to thank you so much, and I'm, I think you're enjoying yourself on the page as well. Okay, so that's a problem with managing a small business. So until you get your head around all the critical components of running a business, strategy, finance, administration, marketing, HR, and all those other things, you will, you will struggle to find where to run a business. And you at the level of this small business, you don't really have the money to employ these professionals. So now everything rests on your head. And that's, for me, one of the critical reasons why a lot of small businesses and a lot of entrepreneurial businesses are failing. So let's find a solution to this semester to our discourse. The lesson is that even though those who don't want to go into entrepreneurship and want to stay in corporate, many of them, we see that there are no jobs now. I mean, the field of health, like medicine and midwifery, there was a time when as soon as you finish your, your, uh, you finish your program, jobs were readily available for you to just take over and just start working. But unfortunately, people now finish school, they finish like the essential exams, and they have to stay home one year, two years, sometimes in three years before they can even be posted. And when they even post that these days, they have to even go for sometimes interview to justify why they should be employed. Times have changed and times are getting more and more, more difficult. Okay, so it means that we have to find a way to help ourselves to be able to do it's, it's difficult. Now, even now, when a job becomes available in this country, you, you have seen that not only we health professionals in Ghana are chasing the job, the, the Cuban guys are coming in, the Nigerians are also coming in. Recently, I heard of some Gambians and uh, librarians also coming into Canada to do for jobs. So now, if you don't sharpen your skills, it's going to be very difficult for you to secure a job and you probably even stay in there. But unfortunately, when we even get a job, that's why we even, we even fuck a lot. We even waste a lot of time. Always complaining, always complaining. Well, I have come to the point in my life where I say I will never complain about how much I'm paid by somebody else. I, don't, I will never complain about how much Garden City is paying me. The value that I bring to Garden City is how much they're paying me. That's it. But I'll take that same value and repackage it into something else and make money along the line whilst not compromising my role, my, my work at Garden City. I'll never compromise on that. But at the same time, within the same space that I have, I'll still make some money along the line, still do some businesses and still make my life better. How do I do this? And I'll share this very with you, with you which has worked with me perfectly over the past eight years. By 6.30 a.m., I'm in my office. And by 8.30, I leave, Garden, I leave my office and go to Garden City. So I do two hours in the morning. Then when I close at 4.30, by 5 p.m., I'm back in my office. And I work 5 p.m. to like 8.30, 9.30, sometimes even 10 p.m. And sometimes I'm deep at 12 midnight before I go home. Of course, this formula might not work for everybody, especially for married women who are kids and all those kind of things. But if you can support your husband to do this along the line, one day, your husband can be able to build this part-time business he does in the morning and the evenings. He'll be able to build it so well that he can now tell you to now resign from the main job and then come and join him to run this business, or come and you, you can go into job, join her to also run a business. It's very possible. And I thank God for this experience that I've had. All of us must start thinking around this because the one stream of income is not enough. It cannot take your kids to go school. It cannot pay your kids' school fees. It cannot take you the chance to be traveling sometimes around the world to see some of the things that people are seeing. It might not even help you drive the car that you want to drive. It might not help you to even help your church or your, 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 your religion to progress. People ask you for 100 Ghana and you're upset. Why? Because the money is not there. It's, it's not there because you are just living on just one stream of income. That is not enough as individuals on this call to be able to do this. So that's why I said to you the last time that my real desire is that most of us should be able to start thinking serious entrepreneurial and be able to build a business. Okay. And then point number three also say that increase desire for freedom from corporate life. People are tired with corporate work. My wife works in the bank. And sometimes when she wakes up, when she wakes up in the morning, and you see the kind of, sometimes she wakes up in the morning, she's already angry. Nothing has happened. Nobody has said anything. She's already angry because she's going to a work that is so stressful. People are looking for ways to go out, get out of the corporate life and then find their own way to run their own business. But again, how do we do it? And I'm telling you, the fact that you are a nurse, the fact that you are a midwife, the fact that you are a medical doctor, the fact that you are a pharmacist, the fact that you are, you are a lecturer teaching marketing and entrepreneurship does not guarantee that you can run a business called a pharmacy, or you can run a business called hospital or clinic or chemical shop, or maybe a consultancy. There's a formula to it. And then finally, high cost of living and life frustrations. Life has become too frustrating.
recently one of our friends got sick and we have to go through some um chemo and those things that you guys talk about and i was shocked the cost that was involved within one week we spent almost close to sixty thousand ghana cities one test alone like four thousand three thousand he was supposed to do a ct scan thousand five hundred you should go and do endoscopy or something like some, some of these things in his stomach they pass something through his stomach and i don't know what they were doing that by the time we finished that one two alone another three thousand four hundred within one week i was shocked how much money the guy has spent and I pray to God that God, please, I beg, let this guy get out of this. And most importantly, protect us from all these kind of devilish diseases. They are so expensive. So now, assuming that this guy has saved about 100,000 Ghana cities for working his lifetime, and then this small, no, no small disease, this, this deadly disease have taken 60,000. How then now this guy is going to now start all over again to start saving money? It's going to be very difficult. And I'm wondering how many of us on this call, honestly, have in our Bank account, investment, not savings, investment, money that are saved in that account, that is earning uh, more income for you. How many of us on this call have more than 200,000 Ghana cities in our bank account? I wonder. And if you are working for five years, six years, seven years, eight years, 10 years, and we don't have 10, 100,000 cities or 200,000 in our account, we're in trouble because times are very short. It is time for us to speed up, look out for the strategy to be able to speed up our life to the point where we quickly have to do the right things. That cutting corners and doing deals here and there will not bring you that kind of revenue. No way. It's not going to happen. Trying to sell things in the world, uh, selling pills. I've seen it. My when my when the, when the guy was sick, we went to Kofanochi. I saw all kinds of things. Selling pill here and there, selling this here and there. Those small small money. It won't take us anywhere. And those money, by the time you even get to that money, is finished. But my point is that we should find substantive income generating ventures that can help us. And I ask you a question, if any of you is fired today, if you are fired from your work today, you go to work today and they say, don't come here again, you are fired forever and ever, don't come to our facility anymore. What income are you going to leave on? First question. Number two, do you have any business that you go back to to start working in the business right now once you are fired? If you don't have those things, please, let's wise up. Let's wise up. And it's time for us to do it now. So these challenges for me really have caused me to start thinking very deep to see how can I help as many people as possible to start some business by their side. And that's the reason why I went into this business called the uh, uh, Hyper Consulting Services. And then we have this very, very solid um, uh, module, very, very solid training program called Entrepreneur Business Operating System that have helped people to really start very solid businesses. We take you from the idea generation to how to start a business. And along the line, I'll share this with you. So I will say this and again and again till this semester ends because I want everybody on this call to start thinking entrepreneur. That is the position of Garden City. With all the problems that we have, we have a strong design ourselves with our slogan saying that we want to develop the next generation of innovators. And that includes you. That includes me. Now, having seen this, most of us have decided to go to school. And why do we go to school? We are going to school because we are two things we are looking for either to be able to start our own businesses or to work for someone else. And many of us on this call, I think about 90% of us, 99% of us on this call are working for somebody else as employee or we are, we are in employment. But I want to bring the other side of it, which is the um, own your own business entrepreneurship. Now, just one semester cannot make you the entrepreneur. One semester cannot make you an intrapreneur. And I will explain to you the difference between intrapreneur and entrepreneur. Those two points are the critical reason how people can make money. We can make money based on the kind of thing that you do and how well you do it and difficulty of replacing what replacing you as far as you are concerned. And until you get to that point, it becomes extremely difficult for you to earn the money that you really want to have. Okay, so two things want your life. And there are two critical pathways of making money. All other things fall into one of these. You make money either running your own business or you make money either working for somebody else. Both ways are excellently right. I know people who are working for somebody else as employees and they are paid so well, they are doing so well, they are at the point of call anytime in their businesses and they are doing so well investing their monies that they are earning from this company. I didn't know somebody in this Ghana, in this country where we all are struggling with, can be paid at $10,000 a month. I never knew this. My friend, Maxwell, is paid $10,000 a month in this country. The one day I had to force him for him to show him his appointment letter. 
And when he showed it to me, I said, whoa, then there's a lot on me that I need to do because I noticed that the guy had developed himself so well that companies are chasing. In fact, there's no single year that this guy doesn't have more than two job opportunities. Every single year, worst case, two job opportunities. And any of these jobs come with juicy packages. But the even company even come to his house. The MDs, the CEOs, the HR, they go to his house. So when they ask him, so what at all have you done in your life that has given you that value that people are paying this huge amount of money? He said, you know what? I decided to know, find out what I know to do well, and I decided to focus on that and learn everything about it. Maxwell is a sales professional. Maxwell is a business development executive. He knows how to develop businesses. He knows how to get jobs. No, no job. He knows how to get sales for businesses. He stayed in that vein and learned and learned, taking all kinds of online courses going for international conferences, reading books, reading books, reading books. And today, Maxwell is getting his value. So I went to his house one day, and a man, I really saw a house. I saw a house. I actually went to sleep in the hotel, but when I got to his house that night, I said, Maxwell, tonight I'm staying here. I went back to the hotel, checked out, and brought my things back to the house because his house, the room I was going to stay, was much more nicer, better, oh, my goodness, than the hotel. So I had to come and sleep in his house. That gave me an inspiration. That gave me inspiration and to the glory of God, so far, so good. So don't worry if you are working for somebody else. Don't worry if you are a nurse or a midwife working in there. But how can you become the la creme de la creme? How can you become the person, the go-to person that when there's any problem, everybody is coming to you? When you're able to do that, you become an intrapreneur. Intra, I-N-T-R-A, intrapreneur. And an intrapreneur is someone who is constantly looking for innovative solutions to the many problems that the organization has. Such that when there's a problem, they come to you. What do we do? And that was exactly what happened to Joseph in the Bible. Exactly what happened to Joseph. Joseph is staying in Egypt, and there's a problem in Egypt. There's a problem in the palace. And Joseph was actually in the palace, and he was taken to prison because of 40 first wives and all those things that came up. And the story tells us that when the, the king had a dream, and the dream was big, the dream was a big issue for the, for the, for the, for the king. He didn't know what to do. He was looking for the solution. He brought all his sorcerers and all the dream interpreters to come and interpret the dream. They were able to do it. Then somebody said, oh, I know a guy in prison who knows how to do this. And this guy who said this was also in prison with Joseph. The guy also had a problem in the prison and Joseph solved his problem for him. The guy had a dream. He did not understand what the dream was. And Joseph had a gift, again, a gift of translating the dream for this guy. Out of the prison. So Joseph told the master, when you go out to the, into the palace, I bet. But this guy forgot Joseph for two years, 24 months, until the king, the, now the king himself had a dream and did not know how to interpret the dream. And the guy remembered, oh, I remember a guy in, in a prison called Joseph. Please just call him because he can interpret this dream. And truly, truly, they brought Joseph out of prison. Joseph was able to interpret the dream, solving the problem of the king big time. And what happened to Joseph? Joseph's life became better. In fact, the uh, uh, um, Pharaoh said that Joseph would only be second in command in Egypt. And indeed, he became the second in command in Egypt. The king gave him his horse. In fact, the king even gave him his own daughter to marry for free. Everything was free, 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 free. The point I'm trying to drive here is that if you become an entrepreneur, if you develop your skill set and become so good with what you do, your business itself will see you. But even when you do so well with your with your in your inside of business, and then your your company, your CEO, your MD, your medical director, or whoever you are working with doesn't even see it, and they don't recognize it. Trust me, God in His own mercy would one day pick you up and throw you somewhere else and become better. That's what happened to us. One day God will pick you up because God will not allow you to, or what we call the invisible hand, will not allow you to just stay there. And use your talent and skills and just get there and get rotten. No way. He would open a door for you at some point in time. Definitely open a door for you at some point in time. Even best case, one of the patients who comes to the clinic will see that, ah, this lady, this gentleman is so different. The things he does is so different. And why don't I get this person? And a patient, a patient, I'm telling you, would say, ah, madam, how much are you paid here? Gentleman, how much are you paid here? We are paying 2700 dollars No, 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 no. Why don't you come for us to open the hospital? Because I know I have the money. I can build a modern, an ultra modern hospital for you. Come, let's do this. And what happens to you? The person will just collect you like that, take you somewhere else, and your life will dramatically change within a space of time. Become an entrepreneur. All medical, all medical professionals on this on this call, all of you, 
please become a medical professional of a different. Become a nurse of a different. Become a, a, a midwife of a different. Let people see the difference in you. Let me get to a point where even when the CEO comes to the office, he would want to come and see you every single day that you're in the office or not because you are the solution bearer for whatever solution, whatever problem they have in their the business. That's what we call intrapreneur. Intrapreneur. I have some examples of people who have become intrapreneurs and have been given jobs. In fact, my own testimony, my first job was working with Joy FM as a sales and marketing person. And I came to Love FM again to become a sales and marketing person. And then at Love FM, I was handling the advertising for Killer Farmer. I'm sure all of you know Killer Farmer. So I was handling APC adverts on radio and things. So I would, I would take their jingle or the advert and go to the different radio stations and then get them played and then they pay them. So one day, we're having a meeting with the MD and the general manager, Mr. Sebekfi and Mr. Kovincia. We're talking, and Mr. the MD said, Tiki, come and work for us. At that time, I've never changed job before. I've just fresh from university. I've never changed job before. So when they say, come and work for us, I didn't understand. So I said, oh, say, I don't understand. And then the gen general manager said to me, he said that stop, that, uh, stop love with him as a sales and marketing person and come and work for us as a sales and marketing person. I said, oh, I, I don't know anything about pharmaceutical. It says that's not the excuse. The reason is you stop and come. Well, I said, well, I'll go and think about it. So when I came back to Love FM, I went to tell my general manager, Mr. Miyama, that's boss, can I have my force in Jai? And I was expecting the man, in fact, when I was going to tell him, I was afraid because I thought that he would be very mad at me that I was leaving his company. When I told him, say, TK, you have my blessing, go. I said, ah, say, why? He said, no, you have my blessing, go. I said, no, so I'm leaving Love FM and going to work for them. He said, yes. Then he pulled me to his office and explained to me what the reasons are. So when this, to cut a long story short, when everything was over, I came back to him and asked him, he said, why did you say I should go? He said, TK, you put yourself enough with sales and marketing that Love FM was, en was not enough for you, has become too small for you. Get out to go and bigger, do a bigger job. When I was at Love FM, I was a sales executive, technically, we reporting to many people. But when I went to Kinafama, I became the regional sales and marketing manager, handling Upper East, Upper West, Northern Region, Brunga Hafu, and Ashanti Region. And they bought me a brand new car. In fact, the first time they bought me, I drove a brand new car in my life, was when I went to Kenya Pharma. My salary was doubled. My kids' school fees were taken care of. I was given rent allowance. I was given a vehicle with fuel and maintenance. So technically, my life was paid for. I joined Kenya Pharma, and I opened all the branches that we have around, including the Tamale um, branch as well. By the way, I'm in Tamale, so anybody who wants to see me can kindly call me after class, all right? Go eat some guinea fowl together. Interesting one. Okay. So the point then becomes, how do we... Now become that person, that person, that employee that you are so good at what you do. There's a way to do it. If they start this semester, I will teach you the strategy to become an entrepreneur. The person that the go-to person that everybody wants to work for. That makes you money. That's one piece, one piece of it. The other side of it is run your own business, which is entrepreneurship. And that's what we are focusing our attention on. For me, my guys, I will tell you, and I won't tell you theories. I will tell you what I've, the books I've learned, the seminars I've gone to, and what these things have done to me as an individual and how what is doing for me now that I've been able to come this far. This week, I went to Accra to go and do some tests at Kolebu and um, Leicester. And I, I mean, the cost is, is outrageous. And I can imagine if I was just taking my salary from Garden City, and there's no way I would have been able to take the test, the medical test that I was the stance I, was, I did this week. No way, I can't. The cost involved for me from last week, no, I started from Friday, the things that I'm doing with the medical, whatever, from Friday till next week, Thursday in Accra, I'll go back again. The cost that I'm involving now, one month salary of Garden City will, will not be enough at all. One month, the whole month. So it means that if I had to wait to get this, this test done, I have to save for like three months before I can go and do all those tests. Why? My friends, let's sit up. So whilst you're working for somebody else, become the intrapreneur. And whilst you're working for somebody at the same time, Start thinking entrepreneurial to make your life better. If you have made some sense out of what I've said so far, please type value in the chat box for me. Kindly type, type uh, value in the chat box and let's see what we can do with ourselves. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm fired up and I really want to make sure that we become the, the real person. Imagine, I think, thank you so much. The invisible hand of God works. Very, very true. Say. It works big time. Big time. Uh, Mohammed say, we'll link up. Yes, sir. I'm available to help. Yes, value, value. I've seen fire. Sammy, thank you very much. I'm on fire, I'm telling you. And at this age, all of us, we are almost about the same average age. I want everybody to succeed. I want everyone to get what they really have to do with their lives. And it's very possible. All right. Thank you. Value, value, value. All right. Thank you. All right. So let's move on.
what is entrepreneurship? And I would like somebody to read for us. And that's what I'll do. Um, I, I, I get my class going. Um, Mohammed, father, please, can you read what you see on the screen? And please, all of you should start adding your index numbers to your names. Your full name and your index number, please. Full name and index number, because I'm taking attendance. I told you last time that I'm very particular about index about your attendance. Very, very, very important for me. So all of you should start adding your full name, not nickname, not phone names. I want your full name and your index number. Can you do that for me as we go on with the discussion? All right. Um, I think it's very good to speak. Can I get Abigail Anane Amwakua to read what you see on the screen? What is entrepreneurship? Abigail Anane, please read what you see on the screen. Don't meet yes, yourself. Sir. The ability to identify a need or the ability to identify a need or a problem in a society and organize the needed resources. That is money, people, technology to create a solution and package it for a, spe a specified target customer in an exchange of reward in the face of risk and Unsaid. Very good. Thank you very much, Abigail. So entrepreneurship is very simple. How to identify a problem or identify an opportunity in society? That's all entrepreneurship is about. How are you able to identify opportunities? How are you able to identify problems in society? And so long as you and I are on this planet Earth, problems are everywhere. And if you look at the example that I gave about Joseph, if you are able to solve a problem, you become a superstar. And you definitely will be rewarded for it. Just find a problem and solve it. And you guys in the health sector, there are so many problems. So many problems. As I'm talking to you, I'm sure we don't even have a vaccine for... No, no, no vaccine. We don't have um, a cure for HIV AIDS. We don't have a cure maybe also for hepatitis B. There are so many diseases. It, it's possible... I remember what my, one of my professors told, told us recently. I've joined a, some community in the U.S. where we meet once a month. I mean, I'm telling you, we are paying $250 a month for this. I do it like two times a year. I'm able to do it for the whole year because $250, Charlie, is a lot of money. So I gather my money small, small, small. I join January and I leave. Uh, I go and join back in June and I leave uh, and I go and join back in December because Ghana man, the money is small. Okay. But anytime that I join this group with a monthly program that we host, I'm telling you, it's, it's that sometimes I think about how the li life is going and ask myself, am I part of the process that's going on or I'm just sitting behind or do I want to join what is going on? The kind of solutions people are bringing to solve our problem is amazing. One of the seminars that we had, there's not a software that, you know, they just chat GTP and all those. These ones are just, they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are babies. Those things are babies when it comes to this technology, AI and machine learning things that are coming in, they are babies. There's a software that I can buy for, I think it was $399, about $400 per month. And then let's say that I want to get PowerPoint presentation for my course. I'll just go into the software and say, um, give me um, PowerPoint presentation notes on relationship marketing strategy and entrepreneurship and click. Give yourself 30 minutes. You'll be shocked what happened. Now, the even advanced form that I, they even showed us was that I can even instruct the same machine learning or the AI to give me the same PowerPoint with pictures that, that connect with the topics that I'm actually teaching. When the guy did that, I said, what? Something that would take me one week to do or something even one month to prepare my whole lecture notes for the semester. I can just click at, just click at 30 minutes, get all the notes that I want. Oh, my goodness. But you must pay a $400,000 CDC. Hey, sorry, a $400 a month just to get access to that. And the point that, so $400 is like, let's say times 12, it's 4,800 cities a month. Now, salary require is saying, well, salary put away is saying, but look, when I saw the solution, I felt like, whoa, what have we been doing? People are thinking, if you look at how Uber came and solved our problem with transportation, look at it. Look at how Joseph solved the problem of a king and became the second in command, was given a wife for free, giving a house for free, giving money for free, giving everything for free, 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 and Joseph became Joseph for the Israelites. There are so many problems. And once you find this problem, you now have to find an innovative solution to this problem. That's all about it.
The innovative solution means that how do I solve this problem instead of complaining all the time? We talk too much in this country. And I've told you, I mean, I've decided not to talk too much in it because I noticed that either I talk or not, that nobody's going to add any money into my pocket. So I have to create my own economy for myself. You have to create your own personal economy for yourself to be able to live the kind of life that you want to live. Because nobody might, nobody, nobody thinks about you. You think the government thinks about you sitting on this call today. You are now here, woke up at 6.30 a.m., you are at 7 a.m., you're on this call, learning. Do you know what the other people are doing? You know what the politicians are doing? By this time, the food, the food is ready. It's already taking some nice whiskey, correct, correct alcohol. When you guys, are, some of you are drinking beer and those um, hella alcoholic beverages, the guy is drinking the fineness of all alcohol. So when he's drinking those alcohol, he doesn't get that, he doesn't get sick. But you are drinking the funny ones and you are dying, killing your liver and killing your kidneys. Okay, so nobody cares about that. We have to create our own personal economy. How do you do that? You can do that by finding a problem and finding innovative solutions to them and eventually you can make money out of that. And the point is that once you find the solution, the problem, organize the resources like money, people, technology, and build a solution and package it. Package the product, the, the solution. That is why we have packaged our the way we manage small business called Entrepreneur Business Operating Mastery System to solve the problems of small business failure, to solve the problems of entrepreneurs. And so far, so good. Last year, we run this course. We are charging, um, I think for five weeks, we charge 3,400. No, it was 3,200 cities. And then we had 28 people signing up for five weeks. 28. And the shocking part of this whole thing was that when we organized it, out of the 28 people, only 10 of them were Ghanaians. Only 10 were Ghanaians. So now 28 times 3,200 gave us 89,600 Ghana cities in five weeks. In five weeks, less than two months. Let's even say two months. And I divide uh, 89,000 cities divided by two. It means that if I was paying myself, I was going to pay myself 48,800 Ghana cities a month. And let me maybe show you this model that I'm talking about now. Let me quickly show you. Um, e boss, I'll show you. And I think those of us on the on the call have seen this as well. So this is, I don't know if I show you this last week though. So this is our solution at our consulting firm. This is our solution. If you can see my screen, please type yes in the chat box for me. If you can see the e-boss, kindly type yes in the chat box. Kindly type yes in the chat box for me. All right, so good, you, can, you guys can see. This is our entrepreneurial business operating system, e-boss. The E means entrepreneurial, the B means business, O means operating, and then S means system. This is our own propriety right, and I've registered it. Nobody has this in the world. Nobody. Nobody has this system in the world. And that's why you have put, you have seen TM here, trademark. I've registered it, and if I see anybody using it, I can see you big time. And when I see you for using my trademark, I'll be fucking rich. So I'll be fucking rich. I'll see you big time. And how did I do this? I did this over five years. When I failed in my business, I was trying to look for a document that can help me to run my run a business because I didn't understand why I was teaching entrepreneurship in a university. I was teaching marketing in a university, MBA level and an undergrad level, and I failed my business. I didn't understand. But I could not find one document that can say, okay, TK, start from here to this, to that, to that, to that, to that, to be able to run a business. I didn't find it. So I started reading books. So I could see that this book will say this, that book will say that, that book will say that, and they were all so disjointed. I'll buy this online course to tell you this. I'll go for this seminar to tell you that. And even to the point where I started talking to entrepreneurs, people that I saw were successful, I could find a way to go to them. I talked to my friends and I, I went and talked to this guy. I'll talk to that guy. Please, is there a way I can understand how to run a business? Because I'm worried. My income is not enough. I want to find a way to make some income by the side. And these entrepreneurs, they knew what they were doing. But nobody, again, had a document that they could give to me and say, Tiki, take this. One of them actually gave me his business plan. But when I read the business, business plan, I didn't even understand it. I didn't get it. So I was, really, I was really worried. I started reading and working. So one thing, one day, I just got an inspiration. I think it was God-inspired inspiration. And trust me, when you start asking things, for somehow, somehow, God will find his own way of giving a solution. So I thought, why don't I start doing my own thing? So I started doing entrepreneurial business, operating mastery, doing all kinds of things. But I was gradually putting my models together, modeling my model, putting my models together. And today we have one called entrepreneurship operating business, entrepreneurial business operating system. How to manage your small business. This is what we did last year, and then we had twenty eight people coming in, and within a space of five weeks, 
we mean close to 90,000 Ghana cities. And this is all I joke, I joke. I can show you checks that people have written to us when we have gone to train them on this. I can show you checks. And I'm not showing this to brag to you, but I'm just showing to you that it is possible that even in your own space as health professionals, you can come up with a solution in your health area and blow through the minds of the world. But again, they are sleeping too much. They are sleeping too much. Talking too much. Backbiting too much. The time that we can use to think and read and research, we are using all those time for concern. And that's why we are all struggling. But I bet you, my friends, I'm not sharing all this with you for just to brag to you, but I'm just sharing that it is possible for us to get somewhere else. Very, very possible. If this, for example, in, in uh, we are starting this same course in, in March, no, no, in February, I think for the 24th or 17th of February, we are doing this again for five weeks. This time we are charging 2,390 Ghana cities. And as I'm talking to you now, we have had 18 people signing up and paying full. 18 people, 2,390 Ghana, 18 people. And again, this whole list, this whole 18 people that I'm saying, nine of them are not Ghanaians. And I'm happy, at least I'm going international. TK, they can't be international guy. And I love it because at least, now I'm in Nigeria, I'm in Sierra Leone, I'm in Gambia. And then this last guy who signed is, in, is from, like, um, is from um, Cameroon. A French person come to learn my model. So very soon that will see me on the international scheme, scene. And if I'm able to solve them, give, People want to run their own business, a solution of how they can run their businesses. Definitely, definitely, I'll get rewarded for it. And I remember what El Nightingale said. El Nightingale lived some 25, uh, no, in the 1925s. He said that our reward in life, our reward, which includes our salary, the money we earn, all the things that we earn in our life, is in direct proportion to what we do, how well we do it, and the difficulty of replacing us. I repeat, our reward in life is in direct proportion to what we do, how well we do it, and the difficulty of replacing us. That means that you, the money you are getting now is actually the value you are bringing to the table. Simple. It is not possible that you finish, some of you finish first degree, or no, your, your first course, your diploma with people, other people, they want to do their first degree quickly, they want to do their masters quickly. They went in some specialized area quickly. And the people are earning times four times five how much you're making right now. What were you doing when the people were moving? Well, we have reason. We cannot give excuses. But the point is that the same excuse that you're giving, that person could have given him or herself the same excuses. But today, the person is paid much more. So I'm not surprised that my friend Maxwell is paid $10,000 a month. Not see this. $10,000 a month today. And I'm not paying even up to $20,000. Up to $5,000 a month. I'm not up to that point. What happened? Because Maxwell decided to develop himself and get himself to a point where he has become a solution bearer for the problems of many corporate organizations. That's the point. I'll just end it here. Okay? So, the, the, what I, why, the reason I brought this in is that what we are talking about is how can you find problems and bring solutions to them, period. And then once you find a solution, you find a specific target market people who need your services. So for us, the entrepreneurial business operating mastery system that we have is a system that we have developed for entrepreneurs only, small business only. I'm not interested in the big companies. Of course, I get a lot of training programs with the big companies. Big companies, I get a lot. Every year, I get to teach for Love I get to train Love FM salespeople. I get to work for Vodafone. I get to work for some big hospitals even around this country, a lot of them. And even I'm getting closer to, I'm getting to a lot of boards these, these days. Last year, I was, I was taken to two boards. I'm a board member of two companies. So that brings me up five boards that I'm on right now. Every time that you go on a board meeting, quarter, 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 five K, they'll give you, and you just go away. So assuming that every quarter you have five board meetings and each one of them is giving 5,000, that's a 25,000 in their quarter. What solution are you bringing? And who are you serving? Who, what do people see you to be? Do they see you as a general nurse? Or do they see you as a, as a specific nurse who knows something that should always come to you? Do people see you as just a normal midwife? Or you want to be a midwife of a difference? The money is not in you being a midwife or a nurse. The money is in the difference that you are. And that difference depends on you. Nobody can do it for you. It's you alone. And once you find these customers and you give them the solution that you have, trust me, they will pay you for it. They will pay you for it. If nobody says it at all, I know they'll pay you for it. I never knew my friends, I never knew 
that I can go and speak or train or teach or consult for a company that I can be paid at 14,000 Ghana cities in a day. And a day doesn't mean morning 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The day means that the programs are at 9 a.m. We close at 2 p.m. And by the time I left the people, I had a check of 14,000 Ghana cities. I never knew that a company could pay me at 25,000 Ghana cities working for them for three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for a 25,000 Ghana cities. I will show you the checks, my friend. What happened? I found a problem. I organized my resources. And the resources that I did here, I didn't need money. Everybody said that I need money, money, money to start a business. It is not true. There are a lot of business we can start by bootstrapping. We started gradually and build up gradually. I didn't use a lot of money. And I put these resources together and companies are chasing us for it. I wonder what's even going to happen to me soon because now the time that I'm getting out of people to call me is so much. And now I'm pushing all of them to weekends. What are you doing with your talents, with your skills, and the problems that you're looking around you? Your friends are complaining. You're not finding a solution. You have seen a problem. You are sitting on it. Now, whilst you are being rewarded in terms of money or anything else, there is what we call the uncertainty and the risk. Entrepreneurship is risky. Entrepreneurship is uncertain. It's risky and uncertain because you are not going to walk on a path that everybody is working, which is normal. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You're not going to do the same thing. You're going to do something different. And when you start working, doing things differently, your friends will laugh at you. They will think you are too known. In fact, you say my TK is called, my TK is Shinbua Kodia. That's my, that's the name. TK is Shinbua Kodia. But do you know at some point, my friends, even my co-lecturers at Garden City will call me too known. They will say I was too known. But please don't call me too known. If you call me too known, you're in trouble. I'll give you a cure. Don't call me too known. Even if I'm too known, I know what I know. That one I know too much about. Nobody can take it away from me. But it was interesting when they started coming to know. So one day somebody told me, ah, I think I know to know. I didn't say, I didn't have to know. Hey, any of you to know me? I'm told, how many friends are? Who are those calling me? He said, oh, Charlie, all the lecturers are calling you to know, to take it away to know. I said, okay, that's fine. I'm to know because they are seeing some difference in me. And I was happy. And those who are calling me to know today, they see me differently. And I thank God for it. I thank God for it. So it's very risky for you to do the things that are not normal. Even in my own home, there were times where he did not understand me. One day they complained. I mean, they he came together with my two kids. Uh, I said, Daddy, I don't say, let's go and let's go and let's go and talk to Daddy. They came to me and said, Daddy, why don't you stay home every day? That was the boy. And I said, Yeah, um, oh, Daddy, every day you are going home. Monday you are you don't come to you leave home, home early. You come home late. Every day when you go, when, by the time you leave the house, we are we are still sleeping. When you come back in the house, you already sleep. So we don't even see you. My friends, I was sad. I was very, very sad when my boy told me this. And in fact, when my little girl also even said it, the way she even said it was even much more emotional. I was very sad. But you know what I told them? Guys, I need to make money. I'll find a problem. I'll find a solution. Just give me some time to package it in such a way that we'll be able to, I'll be able to get it well done. And one day you guys will see the result. And trust me, today, today, they don't complain anymore. I remember one day, my little girl came to my bedroom and said, Daddy, you need to come here. Now, when I used to move out, they were saying, oh, you are living too much. Now, they say, oh, come here, because now they've seen the result. How are they seeing the result? To the glory of God, at least every year, I'm able to take them out somehow. Every year. Get them some tickets, and they go. I don't remember the last time that I traveled. They go to good school. My son goes to a private HSS school. Very expensive. In fact, the, 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 the private schools... Um, Term fees, the fees that I pay per term is somebody's one whole year um, nursing or midway fee fees. You guys are paying about 6000 or 8000 or so. My boy pays 6500 Ghana at a private school per term. SHS, private school, 6000 almost 7000 per term. How was I able to do this? I found a solution. I found a problem and I found a solution. And I've packaged a solution and I'm selling a solution to people, changing their business, transforming their businesses, helping people to take control of their small businesses. It was risky. My family laughed at me. They didn't understand me. My colleagues at Garden City were calling me too no. Too no. But then my too no has paid off, and I thank God for it. So that's all about entrepreneurship. In fact, what I'm telling you today is all about entrepreneurship. We can stop here today, and we won't come for lecture again. That's all about entrepreneurship. So my challenge to all of you is, 
what problem are you seeing and how are you finding a solution to this? And who are you going to serve this solution to? And how are you going to charge them for it? And how are you going to manage the risk that come along with it? Please, stick with me this semester. I want to help you. I sincerely, deep down in my heart, want to help you. And again, I would ask and suggest to you that all those who have not joined our group, but this is private, I'm not, I'm, I'm, it's not compulsory. Please take, take, take note of that. It is not compulsory. It's your own voluntary way to join that platform for us to also continue the entrepreneurship education there. What I'm supposed to do to you here, as far as my teaching is concerned, I'll go 100% out to do it for you. But that's another side. You may want to go and join it. And again, I'll, those of you who have the, um, the link on the page, you can put it on the main page and people can join it. So this is about entrepreneurship. Now let's move on. Up to this point, any question, please? Any questions up to this point? Have I made some sense to you? You may raise your hand and ask me any question, or you may drop your question in the chat box before I move on to talk about the next thing. Or still, if you think that this is making real sense to you, please, again, I want to just give me the value, all right? Just put some value there. I'm not asking you to give me value because I want to hear value. No, I just want to feel that, see, see and see and really have to have in my bones that I'm giving you what you are truly looking for. But not just, your, not just your, your A or your B or your whatever you want to. But I just want to go deep down in your heart for you to do something with your career. And I've said two things. One, for you to be able to pass and pass well in this course. And number two, for you to be able to make sure that you start your own business somehow. Because there are problems that you can solve. There are serious, serious problems that you can solve. Go deep down in yourself and look for these problems and let's fix them. And people are going to reward you for it. All right. Thank you very much. I've seen a lot of values in there. I've seen value packed. I love that. <laughs> uh, making uh, some sense. All right, good. Now, the person who goes through all this process is called the entrepreneur. The entrepreneur. I mean, there are different names of calling this. I mean, whatever you call it. But I call it entrepreneur. All right. All right, Jennifer, please go ahead. You have raised your hand. Jennifer. Okay, sir. Um, I'd like to know, say hello. Yes, I'm here. Please go ahead. Hello, can you hear me, please? Yeah, we can. I can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, all right, that's fine. I wanted to find out. Um, let's say you find a problem, and then um, you want to solve it, but here comes the case where you don't really um have money to start up, um, with a solution of this problem. How do you then gather um our amass wealth to be able to? Uh, push yourself to be able to resolve the problem that you've identified. Great. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Yeah, it is true that <clears throat> many solutions will need money. But I can also say that there are a lot of so the problems we have seen around that we don't need money to start. And in fact, when you even need the money, there are many people who have come to our consulting firm and they say they need money. You ask them how much money they need, they can't even tell exactly how much they need. And I'll talk about this when we talk, when we get to the topic of uh, I think it's on how to um source of financing your business. We'll talk about that. There are many ways of looking for money to solve, um to finance your idea. Okay. So for example, um yesterday I met one of our colleagues, one alumni, an alumnus from Garden City at um in Accra where I, where I was doing my the scans and all those things. And I was so happy when I saw it. So oh, ticket, 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 ticket. Some nice, oh, very beautiful young lady. The guys, don't worry when I say beautiful. I know what beautiful is. Okay, so don't worry. Very sleek, nice, um, beautiful girl, lady. So we had a long chat, and she said something to me that really struck me. She said that she was working somewhere in the north, somewhere up around Garu, the Upper East area. And one of the biggest problems he saw, again, entrepreneurial mindset. And he said, she said to me that she got an idea from an entrepreneurship class, that I said in the class that everybody should be looking for problems to solve. As a midwife, she realized that there are a lot of young babies, the babies that are born that die, and they die because there are some basic things that they, they need that they, 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 they have to survive that they don't have, like incubators and very simple things that they do. So he said he wanted to start a pediatric hospital or clinic up north somewhere, but he wasn't able to do because of money. I said, yeah, it's true, because if you want to build a pediatric clinic, you need a lot of money to build the facility itself first, employ the people, and even get the, the, the equipment to be able to take care of these babies. But quickly, it came to mind and said, could you have started this in a way without needing all that money? And yes, true. If she wanted to start a pediatric hospital big time and she has a mother, that would have been good. And then she quickly said, ah, say, maybe I could have started by just 
Um, my, it said one of her uh, uncles had a home there. They could have just started get permission from all these whatever uh, people that you want to get permission from, and started it small, small. Get permission, get a place painted a little bit, and started small, small, and eventually could have been able to do it. I said, so "Why didn't you do it?" She said that she didn't think about that. She can start it from that level. Okay, there are there are, there are many ways of going around that, but the fact that I will say here is this. Please listen to me. No bank, no philanthropist, no investor, nobody who has the money to help you would give you money unless they have seen proof of concept. I repeat, nobody in this world today would give you money to start any business unless they have seen that what you want to do, there's a proof that you can do it. Especially when people have come to know that small businesses are failing, entrepreneurial businesses are risky, and why would a person invest like a hundred thousand Ghana cities or dollars in your business when you're not too sure whether the money is going to come back or not? In fact, that would only happen when people have seen that you are doing it somehow and it's working. Unfortunately, look, I'll tell you about what I'm doing right now. Fortunately for us, with this entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial business operating mass that I talked about, I didn't need too much money to do it. But of course, I spent a lot of money on seminars, on conferences, on books, and all kinds of things. But those are small. When I put the money together, when I look, I say, whoa, how did I get the money to read all these books and buy all these kind of things that I did? But you know that today, a rural bank, no, no, a, a credit union has approached us and saying that they want to use our op enterprise operating, um, the EBOS, to train their, their, their small business owners. What they want to do is that when anybody was, is coming to take a loan from them, they want us to come and train them before they give them the loan. And when we have trained them, they want us to now follow them up and give them coaching so that they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't lose their money. I didn't know what was going to happen to me. And when we look at the figures that we're talking about, these guys were going to put us on a retainer of a minimum of 35 pounds cities every, every quarter. At the time when I started getting the money, I needed money, but I had to bootstrap it. And that's one thing I'm going to teach you. You have to bootstrap your business. Okay? So, again, if I agree with you, there are a lot of things all of us want to do. But the money, 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 money issue. But again, I will convince you to say that we don't always need the money to get our proof of concept. What is the proof of concept? Proof of concept means, concept means that whatever you said you are going to do, you have done it small. It doesn't matter how big it is, how small it is. You have tried it, it's working. And you want to scale it. And that's what they're looking for. Mastercard Foundation and and um, and KNUSD, they are doing something they call Mastercard Master Mastercard Foundation Health Collaborative. Mastercard Foundation Health Collaborative. What they are doing is that Mastercard, together with KNUSD, is training health professionals, nurses, community, whatever, training them on entrepreneurship. And I'm actually on that on that plan on that on that on that board. And all that we are doing is that we are training health nurses, doctors and all those people to be able to come up with their own business ideas and they fund it. The minimum amount of money they give out is 10,000 US dollars. So now they only want to see what you have started. So it is true, we need money, but it's true again that we can always start somehow with a proof of concept and people buy big time into idea. Now the rural banks, are, uh, the credit unions are chasing, chasing us. Me, I'm waiting for the day that APSA chases me to get our enterprise operating business mastery. That's the day I'm waiting for. And I've been praying assiduously that APSA would call us and say, TK, please, can we have a conversation with you? I said, yes, I'll come. I'll go to South Africa and go and sit down with them and say, well, this is my model. If you want to give me $100,000 a month for us to do this for you. And that day you see me fly a helicopter around this country. <laughs> okay. So please, the point is this. Let us have our proof of concept. Is it working? What you said you want to do, can it work? Prove it. Don't start it big. Start it very small. And then prove it along the line and things will be better. Okay? Good. Then if I will answer your question as we go deeper into um, this thing, certain business with small capital. Yeah, you can always start small. Okay, Sibyl, let's go. Please, sir. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. Like, sometimes you be having the mind of setting or find, a, you like, you can get the problem and find the solution. But in the situation where you are finding the solution, but someone has already established it, to close to the place that you were thinking of doing it. And uh -huh. more to the point, you, you don't have much financial as compared to the other person. 
and the person is making money, but because uh because you don't have uh, much finance and then the person too has already taken over where you were thinking of doing maybe mm. you 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 mm. have the fear you mm. have the fear that you might do and people might not purchase your own and because the other person is doing so what do uh, what, what will you or uh, how will you start with that very good thank you very much it is true uh, in the in the course of this semester i'm going to teach you what we call the the unfair advantage Unfair advantage. What makes you different? What makes you unique? What makes you different to the point where people will come to you instead of a friend? It's competition. And competition is everywhere. Even those of us who have been married, some people are eyeing us. Ladies, I'm sure you are married, but some guys will know that you are married, but they still want to come and chase you. We men, they know we are married, but they still want to chase us. That's 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 how life is. You can't you can't live alone in this world. So competition is everywhere. But one thing I can always say to you is this, that don't worry about the competition. Just find out what they are doing and do yours better. That's why El Nattinget said that the, the difficulty of replacing you, that means that you have something unique, the unfair advantage about you that makes you so different that everybody wants to come to you. When I was starting this, when I did my competitor analysis with this consulting that we do for small businesses, I know there were a lot of people doing the same thing. Even in Kumasi, a lot of people. Accra, oh, plenty. But I said I would do mine. I just go in the same space. And do you know that the people who are even who are doing the same thing when I when I met them, they were doing it. Sometimes they intentionally sign up to our, our trade our five-week training program just to get our templates to go and do this. I'm not worried. I am not worried at all. Because you know what? The spirit that I have, that is back in mind. You don't have it. The passion about mine, that's what I'm doing. You have no idea what it is. You don't know how much I'm praying. You don't know what I'm doing behind the scenes, praying, going for seminars, still paying people to coach me, to guide me, to direct me, and doing everything possible to make me unique. Nobody can take it away from me. It's called the unfair advantage. It's unfair. You can't take it away from me. So for me, for example, when I, when I wanted to do my MBA, my PhD in this same area, strategic marketing, innovation, entrepreneurship, people didn't understand. But I can say for sure today, that none of my competitors who are doing the same thing have and have a PhD in strategic marketing, innovation, and entrepreneurship. Nobody has that kind of qualification. I'm the only person who have it. None of my friends have joined the Association of Accredited Small Business Consultants in the US. Nobody has joined that society because we are paying $150 a month. And the guys will not pay. I pay every month and I'm on the, on, on the same thing. So I get into the minds of people who are global. Nobody's a chartered marketer as far as doing this business is concerned. I'm a chartered marketer for the, since 2013, up to today. So if you look at what I have, PhD in the same area, MBA in the same area, uh, what else, Krampu? Uh, being, being a member of the Association of Accredited Small Business Consultants and doing this and teaching the university, nobody has it. <clears throat> so now, even if you go to YouTube, you can, buy, you can go and watch free videos. Oh, it's good for you. You can watch it. No problem. You can go and buy, <clears throat> sorry, you can go and buy online course, no problem. But when you come to us, the feeling is always different. So don't fear competition at all. Do, see, just stay in the area where you know what you know, what you know, period. And you'll be fine. I don't fear competition at all. No, 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 at all. At all. I was talking to one of my friends, and he also has some models that he teaches around this. And I asked him, how many people have ever signed to your program before? He said, the highest has got about nine people. And I saw the last time I got 28, people say, hey, 28 times 3,200. I said, yes. He said, whoa. But this guy has been in business for like 25 years. I've been in this business for almost like 80 or 9 years. No. Just stay in the game. And consistently develop yourself and work at it. It will work right. Good? All right. Thank you very much, Kofi. Um, congratulations, Doc. Thank you so much. Yep. All right. So let me get somebody to read. Jennifer, can you please read what you see on the screen from Jennifer, who just asked the question. Can you read what you see on the screen for me? Jennifer, let's go. Where is Jenny? I'm here, sir. Right. Who is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is a person who sees an opportunity to serve people in some way with a product or service that they want and need. And then it's able to bring their product or service to the customer at a cost that is lower than the customer is able to pay. Very good. 
So entrepreneurship is all about what we said before. So the person who does, who goes through the process of entrepreneurship is called the entrepreneur. He's a human being behind it. So I call myself an entrepreneur because I've been able to find a problem and I've found a solution, innovative solution to solve the problem. That's it. So I am an entrepreneur. So you must all put yourself in that state of constantly looking for problems and constantly looking for innovative solutions to solve those problems. That's it. It is risky. It is discouraging. It is burdensome. It is, I don't know what, what other words to use. Even if what it says is rosy, they are lying. They will lie to you. I'm telling you, it's very discouraging sometimes. How can I be called too known? For what? What have I done? How can my wife kick against, come against me with their, with their kids saying that means nephew? And I'm always moving around. It's discouraging. And I think they love me so much to the point, that's why they came to complain. So once I sat them down and again, I explained to them what I was trying to do and they got to understand it. Even still at that point, they didn't see the result because the point is it. People follow results. People are looking for results. People are looking for you doing what you said you can do. And once you can do it, which is the proof of concept, they will follow you. How come that pastors who just use, they will say, okay, come and buy oil for 2,000 Ghana cities and I'll get a result. Whatever result they are giving to them, people are getting it. So they go. So I know somebody who used part of his working capital to go and buy oil and thinking that the oil will give her business. He went to buy the oil and the business collapsed. And I told mama, mama, why would you do this? I don't say don't pray. Me, I pray. I pray a lot. I fast. And I seek counsel from people who know what they know, what they know what, what they're doing. But why would I go and buy that oil and don't even open your shop on time? You go to your shop at 9 a.m. Your competitor opens their shop at 6.30 a.m. And you go and buy the oil and come and come and spread the oil in the shop, thinking that because you have spread the oil, the people will come like that. Mm -hmm. Hey, my goodness. In mm the -hmm. no, 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 no. Okay. So there's a way to go about all these things, and I really wanted to know this. So now, what is entrepreneurship? The summary of entrepreneurship is that you will find prosperity prosperity by making life better, by making life easier, by making life faster, and by making life cheaper, and most importantly, by making life convenient. This is the foundation and the power of entrepreneurship. Please screenshot what you are seeing on the screen right now and keep it with you forever and ever. If you want to create wealth as a, as a medical professional, if you want to create wealth by solving the problems of people, if you want to create wealth by taking advantage of opportunities and creating a business out of that, whatever you are bringing must be better, must be easier to use, must be faster for people to use, must be cheaper, and most importantly, it should bring convenience to people anytime, anytime, anytime that they need you. And I'll give you an example quickly. Let's see some example. Number one, I'm sure we have all seen this this thing here, and that's what most of us we find of. Food. And sometimes when I see this photo and see the way the cat is waiting patiently on a chair, waiting for the food to be finished and then gets his own get its own share to eat, it's very amazing. Look at the cat on the chair. You see? But look at how much the guy is struggling to do this. Somebody sits down and finds this such a big problem to get food to eat. What did he do? He brought it. Food. So whilst we are going to spend about two hours to get our regular food to eat, somebody comes out with the beautiful food, and within five, ten minutes, we have a food ready to go. Assuming that this guy is selling. 1 million pieces of food packs of this every month. Example, I'm just giving an example. Assuming that he's selling 1 million pieces every month and there's profit on this one, any time that he sells one, um, how much is it now? Can somebody tell me how much is needed for food? How much is needed for food now? Please, can somebody give me a price? I'll leave it. How much, how much, how much, how much? 49 Ghana cities. Jeez. So let's say 50 Ghana cities. Assuming that need for food is 50 Ghana cities. And this man is making two cities per pack profit, and he's selling two million pieces and one million pieces per month. It means that the profit for this guy alone is two million Ghana cities every single someone who save fucking month in this country. Two million Ghana cities every single fucking month by selling meat for food in this country. Even if he sells 500,000 pieces a month and his profit margin is two, uh, two cities, this guy will make it a 1 billion Ghana cities every single month in this country. He has found an innovative solution to the problem. So I'm not surprised the owner of this business is building houses and doing all kinds of this in this country. And I know he belongs to Despite, the Despite group. So now if Despite go to build a police station in his hometown and buys a brand new pickup for the police people and give them everything that they need to run the police station in his hometown, he knows where he's getting money for.
again, let's look at this. This lady actually came to speak to um, your class last 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 semester, and I'll get her to come and speak to you as well. She's nothing. She did um, integrated development studies at UDS, and then she said that while she was working in the Upper West, she noticed that there were young ladies who were not coming to class every month. And she will find out that they will not come to class because at the time when they get into their menstrual cycle, they are not able to take care of themselves. They, they don't have the money to buy the pads. So what they do is that they don't come to school at all. Because when they come to school and they saw themselves, the boys laugh at them. And they get embarrassed, so they, they won't come at all. So she started filling them up and realized that they were not coming because of this problem. So she started using her national service money to be buying sanitary pads for this girl. But at some point she could not because the girls were becoming too many. When they got to know that she was giving them some trip pad, she was she was using all her money to buy some trip pad for these people. It was come too, too difficult for her. So again, find the problem, and then she find an innovative solution. You know what she did? She now developed reusable sanitary pad for these young girls, and that's the one that I'm holding. I'm, it's me standing here, right? So I was standing. I, I was a programmer that I had was a was the moderator for it by the SMV Green people. And then, see, this guy, they paid me good money. For three days, they paid me very good money for what I did that day, for the three days. So the study, the new example study trip part, what I'm actually holding now. And then she came to pitch. She came to ask for money from SMB Green, and they gave her 200,000 Ghana cities, plus buying her machine, sewing machines, industrial sewing machines, and even help her to import the material that she's using to produce this reusable study trip part for these young ladies. Hamdia is fucking rich now. She found the problem and has found the solution. When she speaks to she she comes to spoke, speak to your class last last semester, she will actually come to speak to you. Every year I bring her to come and talk to you because you are health professionals, especially midwives, to understand that there are problems in there. This lady is not nice. This lady has nothing to do with health, health service at all. But look at what she has done. She has brought a solution in the health sector, and today she is rich. Impacting lives, changing lives, and bringing lots more smiles on the young ladies so that they can go to school. And that's where the proof of concept comes in because now, when she came here, she came with a sample. She came that she told at the point that uh, when she was speaking, at the time when she was doing this, she has actually supported more than 500 young ladies to go back to school every month. Every month. Proof of concept. She has proven that her formula, her solution works. And as a result of that, she's been able to get money to finance her business. And then she traveled the world. She was in South Africa, I think, just before Christmas. And then the last time I spoke to her, she's going, said she's going to Kenya because there's an exhibition in Kenya that she wants to exhibit this. And look, assuming that this lady is able to sell one million of these percentage parts every month, and she's making one city profit per one, this lady will be one million Ghana cities every single month rich. What solution are you bringing? What are you doing? Next one. I'm sure we all know this guy, right? Lewin. Lewin is rich because she has found a solution to a problem. And what solution has it brought? Lewin has been able to use his talent to make people happy. And I'm sure many of you watch his movie because anytime that you watch his movie, you, you laugh. So it, it, it doesn't matter how much stressful you are. Once you watch this guy's movie, you are laughing, you are happy. And is he rich or not? Lewin is also fucking rich. Lewin doesn't have a JHS certificate. Lewin doesn't have a PhD. But Lewin has a school. Lewin has a school. In fact, I will share a video that he was interviewed on radio and he was asked, why did he open the school in Kumasi? And he said that he opened the school because he did not have the chance to go to school. And now that he got as blessed with money, he will open a school for people to go to school. And in fact, he will even say in the video that he doesn't even charge people the TNT, the transport that they take, they, they go and bring their kids to school. He doesn't charge the people. But you and I have degree, but we don't have a school. Find a problem and fix it. Next, when I'm on my ground, same thing. Again, fucking rich. High sense. You are tempted to say who? Do you know how much this lady is paid for doing those kind of advertising? They are talented. They are using their talent that God has given to them to make life better, make life easier, make life more interesting, and make life more make life much more convenient for people. And as a result, they are paid for it. How about this? This lady collects um, um, water sachi and transforms them into bags. Someone they say, we'll buy this bag. But you know what happened? When she was able to design this pan ice, she actually collected pan ice um, um, uh, pouches like this and then transformed them into bags. You know what pan, pan, pan milk did? 
farm milk are sponsored here with a factory where they are collecting these waste and transforming them into bags. These are the realities. Please, whoever is, there's somebody disturbing the class. Please, all of you must mute your microphone. Please, please mute your microphone. Somebody is disturbing everybody. Please mute your microphone. Let me mute them here. Who is this? I'm not even finding the person. Okay, thank you. Please don't disturb the crowd because it affects everybody else. That's, a, that's another solution. How about this? This person finds out that car tires, when they throw them into the ground, they collect water and they collect mosquito. They breed mosquito and the mosquito lead the malaria and all kinds of things. So what did you do? Instead of allowing these tires to lie on the ground and causing problems, she transformed them into tables and chairs, living room furniture. This one, she did not need any money from anybody. But actually, a bank sponsored her to be producing these tables and chairs and living room furniture and be selling to people. The one we are seeing here is 2,500 Ghana City. She doesn't buy the ties. She goes to collect them for free. But because she was doing the manual, she was using just normal manual to do this, the bank realized that they can buy her machines to be able to do this. And then they gave her machine. Again, proof of concept. Let people know that what you have works. And people will be willing to pay money into it. How about this? Somebody collect these bottles that are also another big issue for us in this country and transform them into chairs like this. Plastic bottles transform into chairs. Beautiful. He, then this guy even had bed. He has been made bed out of this. And you would think that you, when you sit on it, it's going to go down. No, 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 no. All the bottles are covered. So the bottles are, are covered, are filled with air. And because they are filled with air, when you sit on it, it doesn't, even, it doesn't spoil. How about this? Why do we find this material many times? We find this material a lot of times when we go to the seamstress. Somebody finds out that this material, they leave them on the ground. We burn them. When we burn them, it affects the uh, climate. We leave them on the ground, it affects the soil. Somebody picks these materials and transforms them into wall designs. Beautiful. Beautiful. Just cut small, small pieces and design your wall nicely with this one. How about this? So look at the background of this guy. Nice, with the same kind of material. How about this? These are empty bottles that people throw away. And this person also collects them and then do this very nice design. Of I saw this in a friend's office and I asked him, wow, this is very beautiful. And she told me the lady who does it. These four bottles you see, you see it's written on it, love. So you can give this as a gift to your husband or boyfriend during Valentine. Nice one. Valentine, you just buy one for them. Let them decorate the office or their living room with it. These four bottles you see here called love, L-O-V-E. It's a thousand Ghana cities and people are paying for it. You say any boy a day. Una any boy or day because you don't have the money. Una any boy or day because you don't place value on this. But people are buying it. A thousand Ghana cities. I saw an exhibition in Accra. The person is selling them all kinds of designs. These bottles are thrown away. Nobody needs them. And they are, sometimes they get broken and it cuts people. This person says, no, no, no. Let me transform this into a business. And people are doing it. And mine is here. This is our consultant firm. Hyper consulting services. God has blessed us with the idea, and especially with the entrepreneurial business of preaching mastery, it is blessing us and opening doors for us. Okay? This is me training people. This is me on radio. Hyper is helping us. And I work for all these companies. I'm showing this asking you what problem have you seen and what solution are you providing, my friends? So I'm sharing with you not what I have read only. But I'm sharing with you what I've done and I keep doing every single day in my life. I work for all these companies. In fact, any company on this call or you are seeing right now has never paid me the same as how much I paid working for 30 days for Garden City. No, 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 no. Just consulting for them. So that they pay times two times, three times, four. How much I paid working for 40, 30 days working in the university. Take your work seriously. I told you about a check. 2022, a company paid me 14,000 cities in a day. Another one, Hyper, 14,000 cities in a day. Another one, 10,000 Ghana cities for one week. Another one here, 25,000 cities for Hyper. I'm speaking to you, I'm showing you the proof. The proof of concept that if you find a problem and you find a solution, people will pay you for it, my friends. It is true, it works. It works. It takes time. It is risky. It's discouraging. It is frustrating. People will call you names, too known. But when you start showing them the proof, then they will come back and say, Tiki, why are you? Hyper, why are you? It works, my friend. 
And that's what I've told you that I'm really willing to help you to do whatever you want to do. So what are we going to do this semester? I'm going to make sure that I walk you through all these. This is the course outline. We'll go to, today we have finished the first one. Next, we are going to talk about how do we find business opportunities and how do we identify all those kind of opportunities. We write a business plan. We'll learn how to write that one. We'll talk about how to finance your business and how to look for money to start your own business. And then, please, I told you, attendance is very, very important to me. I told you my reason why I told attendance is very important to me. I won't repeat that today. So we are going to do a lot of assignments, and some of you have already submitted the assignment I gave to you. I read some of them, they were very interesting. Thank you very much for doing that. All those who have not submitted, you have up to close of day today. By 12 midnight, you cannot submit the assignment. So please, all of you who have not submitted your assignment, the email address I'll be giving to you, kindly send the address, um, kindly send the assignment to the email, and I'll print them out and then the market and give you scores for it. And of course, the main semester is 70%. And I will tell you the format. Either we'll do MCQs only or we'll do MCQs and theory. I've not decided yet. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. So it's going to be very exciting this semester. And I'm very willing again to help you to do all kinds of things. In fact, this summary today alone is enough for you to start thinking entrepreneurial. Start thinking entrepreneurial because you can do it too. I am doing it. Your nine to five is not enough. You have a lot of time. The rest of the time that you have, please make use of it. Find deep down within you what you know to do well and focus on that one and build your capacity around that one and make sure you're able to commercialize that idea to build a business along the line. And I'm sure God will bless you and bless you and bless you, right? That's my story. That's entrepreneurship. That is relationship marketing strategy and entrepreneurship. And that's my number on the screen. You may want to save it and then we'll talk again later on. And all those who have not joined the platform, you may want to join it if you want to because we do all kinds of things on the platform and can help you. All right. Thank you very much. Any questions? I'll just pause here and see if there are any questions or any comments Then we can now continue from there. Raise your hand or you can drop your question in the chat box. And in fact, if you have taken a lot of ideas from what you have done so far, please type idea in the chat box. All right. Alasa, go ahead. Type idea, idea, idea in the chat box. Yes, Alasa, we are waiting. Alasa, no reading. Please, you have raised your hand. We are waiting for you to speak. Or meet us. Oh, let me ask you to omit. Okay, sorry. Please omit yourself. Al Hassan, please. Okay, Hello, ahead. sir. Yes, please. Sir, sorry, I was not able to omit myself. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, thank you very much, sir. In fact, I'm very, very impressed for this morning's lectures. Sir, but I want to find out does age matters when it comes to an entrepreneurship? Maybe you good, consider good your age. Yes, yeah. please. Good question. Good, very good question. Arthur, thank you so much. I don't think age matters at all. At all. Age does not matter at all. At every point in your age, you can be an entrepreneur. Before I even come to talk about what I know from Ghana, let me talk about, I'm sure all of you know KFC, right? KFC was started by Kendall Sanders. Kendall was, was a military officer, and when he, when he retired at age 65, he didn't know what to do with himself. I'm talking about KFC that we have in Ghana right now. So this guy realized that, no, Charlie, what, what am I going to do? After 65, I've gone on pension. What am I going to do with my life? Then he remembered that his mother used to fry chicken in a very special way. A very special way. So he started, try, I mean, he didn't have anything to do. So on pension, he started doing the same chicken with his, in, in his neighborhood. So he would fry the chicken and go and give it to his neighbors. And then people will feel the aroma in the community. You know how KFC, the chicken, the aroma is? So he was frying the chicken and sharing with the people. Then eventually, gradually, most of the people in the community, when they have parties and they have events, they will call this guy and say, please, can you fry the kind of chicken that you have so that we can use it for our party or our wedding, whatever you wanted to do. And actually, what, according to the story, he was doing it for free. He was doing it for free. But one day, the breakthrough came when one of them said they needed 1,000 pieces of the chicken. And when they needed 1,000 pieces of the chicken, that meant that the guy had to go out to go and buy plenty of chicken to come and fry for these people. And again, he had to buy a bigger equipment or buy a bigger utensils to be able to do that. So he charged the people. And according to the story again, when he charged the people, he thought that they were not going to pay because he had never charged anybody for frying chicken before. He charged the people, I think he said it was $400 or something like that. And the people paid instantly. They didn't go back home to go and bring the money. They said, okay, we'll pay. And the guy said, hey, then what I'm doing can make money. He did a chicken for the thousand pieces for them. And they started now getting more orders. 
more orders, more orders, more orders, more orders. So the KFC you are seeing today is called Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's from Kentucky. Kind of Sanal is from Kentucky in the US. So he, it was named after him. Kennel was 65 years when he found his idea and became a serious entrepreneur. And the reason why I'm saying that age doesn't matter is that if you do your things right, you will never know unemployment. You will never know pension. So, for example, what I'm doing now, I don't think I can go on pension because once I have the models right and I'm even 80 years old and I can speak and I can walk and I can see and I can stand, I can still continuously do what I'm doing. So age does not matter. In fact, age even comes to endorse what you do. Because assuming that I started this uh, training and consulting firm when I was 15 years old, less than 20 years old, I'm sure the credit union wouldn't come to me for any help at all. But today, based on my age, people will come to me. So age doesn't matter. The, but the point is that most of us, we think that once we go on pension, then the, our life has ended. No, 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 no. Somebody said that age is in your mind. You decide to be older or not to be older. So please, age doesn't matter at all. Age even gives you the a confidence to even do it better because you've had enough life experiences that would help you to become a better a better entrepreneur. Okay, thank you very much. Barakisu, please go ahead. Wow, Ibenesa says that Jack Ma was 45 years when he started his Alibaba. Very good. 45 years when Ali, um, Jack Ma started. Look at Alibaba, Jack Ma, for example. The guy is not handsome. Look at the guy. God forgive me, though. He guy is not, he's not handsome, Biasa. But the guy is fucking loaded. It's a small Chinese boy. I remember one day he was standing side by side with um, with uh, Donald Trump with one of the videos and one of their photos. And I saw the guy was like halfway of uh, Donald Trump. I said, this guy, as short as he is, the guy has a lot of money. Eh? Charlotte, everybody. And that's where we are. So Charlotte, wake up. Wake up. Let's do something, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Bukhari, please go ahead. Bukhari. Oh, let me unmute you. Oh, allow you to unmute. All right, sorry. Please, you may, you may unmute yourself now. Hello, sir. Yes, please. And um, please, uh, it's like when you look at the what we are saying, what, what we are talking about favors the uh, you, uh, those who are working in the cities and the towns. What are those? If you are working in the village, in a situation whereby the people there does not even know what you are doing. You, the patron, the patron there is not encouraging. Whatever you are selling, they are not seeing it. And you also want to establish something. You try several times, and then they, they are not seeing it. Yes. Because I our work it. time, they can just send you to any place at all where you cannot network right is even a problem. Yeah. 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 Oh, and then, yes, sorry, go ahead. And then what is like the discussion now is now when you are in the city, that's where you enjoy it, and then you get better. Of your okay. whatever you are doing. All right. So you are, you are right mm. and you are wrong. I mean, no, I won't say you are wrong. I'm sorry about using that word. But the point mm. is that it is true that in the in the in the look uh, villages or let's say it's village it's difficult. I mean, no two ways about it. But again, I've seen people who have worked in villages and NGOs came to support them in the village. There are people that I saw doing some work in villages. Okay. Nobody mm. was criticizing what they were doing. But an NGO saw what they were doing, and the NGO came to support them to do it big time. There's a place called Drobonzo in a, a such a from Plains area, I think so. That village, did a pregnancy what? Somebody went to that village and started training, were talking to the people. In fact, I was part of a project that we when we saw the lady. She said that she wanted to do her service there, and then she was trying to educate the people to avoid teenage pregnancy. Nobody was really, really bothered. But the Marie Stop, I think it's called Marie Stop or something. That's yes, Marie, Marie, Stop. Marie Stop found this lady and sponsored her. And instead of only working at um um Drobonso in our Seshafan Plains area, Marie Stop has sponsored her to be going to village, deep, deep remote villages, giving her a pickup, fuel and everything else, and they're even paying her to go to the remotest of villages to educate young ladies about menstrual cycle, about um about teenage pregnancy. So, brother, it is true. Sometimes it's very frustrating. That's why we said entrepreneurship is frustrating and it's very discouraging. In fact, it's very risky. But the point is that stay in the game small. Mm -hmm. I have been working on this for almost 10 years. I started seeing good money five years ago. 10 years. Okay, so it is true that the cities give us an advantage. But again, 
wherever you find yourself, do the best you can and trust me, God will find a way to bring you there one day to get you what you need. Don't give up. Don't give up. Okay. okay? Thank All right. you. Yes, sir. Yes. The gift says take your time, uh, study the area in which you are. You definitely get something to do. Yeah, you are right too. Farming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do something. Sell charcoal. You are right. Village two has a problem. Discover it and seek some consultation on how to do it. Thank you very much. Run to town. Oh, but see, somebody says you should run to town. Are, they're not coming to town. They will stay there and still help people. Location, no. All right. Good. Um, let's talk to Ishmael. Ishmael, please go ahead. Ishmael. Oh, let me let me allow you to speak. Sorry. Ishmael, please go ahead. Please, sir. Yes, please. Uh, I just want to add to what my brother who just made his point. Like, I know someone who is from a remote area. Then this person is a nurse. Yeah. The person has studied the area and see that most of the people around there, most of them, they have BP and diabetes, but they don't know. So this guy has decided to go and buy glucometer and strips and BP apparatus and have some some of uh, some few HPT medications and uh, anti-diabetic uh, medications. So the guy in, uh, the guy went and bought all these things. He started checking the sugar. One person, like uh, one person, he takes ten cities mm -hmm. from the from the uh, from the sugar checking. But the BP was free. Meanwhile, he bought the he bought the uh, he bought the glucometer and the strips five hundred cities. So at the mm. end, this guy got more than five thousand plus. Yeah, yeah. Meaning the the guy has decided to study the area. No, the place mm. is a, a remote area village, typical village pa. So he end up by doing that. So the people keeps on even telling him that he should come back again and then help them because some of them were having diabetes then hypertension but they were not aware so after that he wrote like uh, he got the paper anyone that he checks so he writes it for them then like uh, if you see that it's too high he can refer the person to a big hospital to tell him or her that he should go and see a prescriber for further management so i think if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're in a remote area you can study the area see the problem and then you 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 might you might get a solution to to solve the problem. Yeah, you are very right. I love this example too. You see, so the point is that of course, I mean, we are not disputing the fact that the villages have challenges. No two, there's a big issue in the villages. No two ways about it. But what we are saying is that just still try. Do the, the most important is the value you are bringing to the people. And of course, sometimes you have to do it for free, for free, for free, for free for a long time before people can even believe you that they can give you the money. And that's where the challenge is. That's where the frustration actually comes in. Okay. So wherever you are, you may do, do something. And eventually, someday, one time, things will happen to you. Okay. All right. So I think we don't have any more questions now. So I want to say a very big thank you once again for your time. I think it's almost time for us. Good. Oh, we are right on time. Eight, eight, seven. So thank you very much again for your time um, today. Please, all those who... um. I've ordered for your handout for you. Kindly uh, send your money to your classroom. I beg, please, please, please. I told you that this thing, I don't make money from it at all, at all. I'm just doing it for you. And I've ordered for everybody. So please don't let me make a business decision for helping you. All of you must get the money to your class reps and then we'll get the books for you very soon. They're almost done with it. And then we can pay them and then we'll collect them for you as well. And again, for... Those who want to still continue, follow us and work with us. You may want to call me later on for us to discuss whatever you want to do.